Welcome to Business Purpose and Clarity with Petri. I'm your host. We talk about startup life, insights, practical tips, mistakes, failures, and everything between. Are you fundraising? Are you taking funds from other people? Using other people's money? Well, this episode is for you. And I'm reminding you, and actually asking, do you know your investors? Did you have a criteria? When you were selecting them, did you select your investors or did you just take anyone's money? If these are like a revelation to you, it's quite important that you at least pause a bit and think about these issues. Now we are in the middle of a real big change in the world because of uh, the Russian situation. And um, a lot of investor money may not be that good money. You can see it in many ways. Either it's directly under sanctions, or maybe the values of the investors or the people who are managing some other people's money, namely hedge funds or VC funds, might not be aligned with your ideas, what's fair and ethical to do. Even though there may not be pressure from outside public outrage, you may still feel uncomfortable with the people you have on board. And like in a marriage, it's really hard to get out. Technically, yeah, you can do it, but it's emotionally hard as well. This applies to your investors as well. You are stuck with them when you take them in. So it's easier to be more selective from the beginning. Yeah, I can hear you thinking, hmm, yeah, that's a really nice situation when you have uh, enough investors queuing on your door so that you can select. Yes. That's one of the cases, but there's other cases as well. When you don't have investors lining up, but I phrase it differently. And uh, then you can think, what's the answer for you? Can you afford to take those investors? What's the cost of doing business with someone who later turns out, or even from the very beginning, against your values and maybe even jeopardizing your company in the long run. Which is the better way? Take the money and suffer the consequences or avoid the issue from the very beginning. Only you know the answer. But what I know from my experience of fundraising is that it's a really good feeling when you can find people who you can align with, you have selected, and, and this is your process, this is your sales process. You are selling your company. You are the salesperson doing the work. So you should also do the marketing part of it, the pre-qualifying part of it, actively going after those people who you think are a good match for your company. Because oftentimes I see that it's more like uh, shotgun approach where any investor is good investor as long as they give you the money but that's not really the case did you know that vcs also talk to each other surprise do you know that uh, they are also hidden or not so hidden but maybe you are just not in the loop categories for VCs. So if you have certain investor, certain VC with you, you are actually signaling a lot. You are like a lighthouse beacon, a siren for other investors. And if you need to take more than one round, you are knocking on the doors again. And you're showing your investors because you cannot hide, hide the fact that you have these other people with you. In some cases, the doors are closed or they never open to you if you have a certain VC or investors with you. Because companies and people have reputation. And if you don't know that reputation, well, that's on you because you didn't do your work. The homework is necessary. It's painful. 
but it's your company. It's up to you how much time and effort you put on selecting the right partners with you. So do your DD. Check out whose money they're spending. Talk to the other founders, entrepreneurs in their portfolio. More importantly, talk to those founders who did not succeed with their company. How did the investor treat them? How did the things go? If the company was just a failure, didn't succeed, but things went smoothly, the investor was supportive, there was no big issues from their side, well, that's a good signal. If a, in quotation marks, failed entrepreneur still recommends the investor because it's not when things go well, you see the true colors of people, but it's when the ride gets rough and it will. There are too many occasions where the investor will blackmail you or try to blackmail you. Use the leverage they have if you are in a tough spot. That happens because they can. And that is exactly what I'm talking about. These are not the things you read on Twitter, on Instagram posts. You need to hear them firsthand. You just need to know these things. It is a tough world. Some people are better. Some are not that good. And hopefully you can find the good people who can support you, who are behind you, and think about the best and the, and the good of the company and not just they themselves or they fund or saving their investors. But just keep in mind, the VC model is not aligned with the entrepreneur. It's easier for a VC to sacrifice your company because it's a numbers game for them. You are part of the portfolio, but you don't have a portfolio. You only have one company and you don't know how the VC's portfolio is performing. Maybe they are sacrificing you for a quick exit or maybe they just gave up on you and they don't want to allocate the time for you. You don't really know what's happening in there and it's not in your control. So be careful. Good luck.